Hi, it's Matthew Reed here from How to Repair Pendulum Clocks with another Workshop Techniques video. For me, this video actually started 35 years ago. Uh, one of the very first uh, clocks I got to repair before I had any training, formal or otherwise, any machine tools, certainly didn't know how to solder, uh, was a three train uh, early 20th century long case clock very kind of heavily built and good quality machine anyway I can't quite remember the detail but what I do remember is the client rang me up and said Matthew that clock you looked at or repaired um, won't stop chiming and uh, of course as clock repairers, you know what that means. It means there's some issue with the rack or the gathering pallet or the rack hook. Anyway, to my horror, when I took the hands and dial off, I saw that not only had the gathering pallet uh, broken off, it was on the seat board, but it hadn't just dropped off, the arbor had actually sheared through outside the plate. Again, I can't quite remember how I got myself out of that pickle at the moment. <laughs> Maybe the clock's still out there waiting to be repaired. But anyway, if you have ever found yourself or you happen to find yourself in that situation, then this video is for you. Hope you like it and we will see you again at the end. So I was sent this uh, parcel by someone who also appears to have gotten in a bit of a pickle and in this case I was happy to help out. When we um, open the box we see, uh, oh it looks really nice, but uh, regrettably uh, it's not what it seems. It is in fact a frame, a movement frame from a two train uh, pendule, a French clock. Um, and uh, a rack as we see and two gathering pallets when we look at the gathering pallets we see that one is a kind of nominal spare uh, taken from another clock and the original one is there and again when we look at that we can see that the extended arbor of the gathering wheel is broken off in the hole. Now interestingly it's broken off at both ends. Normally there's a piece of the arbor that extends beyond the gathering pallet that allows you to tap it out when you're removing it. Uh, we might talk about this at the end but please don't try and lever the pallet off when disassembling the clock otherwise you're likely to end up in this situation. Anyway we're going to uh, repair the arbor, or we're going to fit an extension and refit the uh, original gathering pallet. So the first thing we need to do is to get the stub of the arbor out of the old gathering pallet. And to do this, I'm going to use my staking set. Now, a staking set is a big investment, but again, worth every penny if you can afford one. For years and years I used uh, an old one, a part set, and that was absolutely fine. It's only very recently that I've updated to this set that actually is complete, um, which is a, a lovely thing to use, although it's quite a small set. If you don't have a staking set, you can always use blued pivot steel and make little punches for jobs like this. So I think the uh, the owner or whatever had tried punching this uh, bit of arbor out of the hole because it was incredibly tight they don't need to be driven on and interesting that it was broken off at both sides so I think they'd really uh, struggled with it anyway by looking at the wear marks where the gathering pallet lifts the rack I was able to determine uh, which way the arbor should push out the tape is very slight and uh, it took quite a while it was a quite a work holding kind of challenge um, in the end I notched uh, some fine pliers to hold the thing square but the remains of the little extended arbor did come out 
I was then able to measure that and uh, you can see here it's just over 0.8 of a millimeter in diameter and so I then selected uh, a bit of blued pivot steel that again was slightly larger diameter than that which is going to be our new soldered on extension. So to make the two ends together I'm going to uh, make one of them into a male shaped cone and the other one into a female shaped cone so a concave thing and a convex thing and they will fit together. So I mount the arbor in the watchmaker's lathe and uh, because there's a lot of the arbor that sticks out even though it's broken off it's really difficult to turn it. It would be possible um, holding it in a slightly different way but what I decide to do is to use these easy lap uh, diamond files I suppose they're called um, to file that cone on the end. Now um, this isn't super precise, it's concentric enough but remember what we're doing here is we are just um, making sure that the two ends fit together neatly when we solder them. So once I've done that I turn my attention to the uh, blued pivot steel. So on this we want a concave a cone or a female end on it and I do this with uh, again in the watchmaker's lathe but using a tungsten carbide graver. The uh, difficult part of this process is actually finding the centre. This work is too small to use a centre drill and the steel is very hard anyway. I'm not sure that would work. So you use the tip of the graver and again it's a really useful technique to practice on a bit of scrap material because once you've got it again it is worth its weight in gold. So now we have our two components. We have the arbor with a cone on the end and we have the blue pivot steel with a cone in the end. And they are going to fit together quite nicely. Now I'm going to use my watchmaker's lathe to actually hold the two components uh, in line. Um, it seemed like a reasonable thing to do at the time. Obviously I've got to protect the um, soft soldered wheel collet so I put a bit of rag around there soaked in water and I also protect the pinion a bit by fitting um, a sort of brass sleeve onto it just to stop the um, act as a bit of a heat sink. The flux I use is Tenacity Flux, I'll put a link in the description. And the solder is Silver Solder Extra Easy, that is relatively low melting point. So I'm going to trap a piece of uh, flattened solder between the two components and then gently push them together when the solder melts. So now we have our two components sort of soldered together. It's time to, again, in the watchmaker's lathe, turn off some of that excess material. Once I've done that, and it's just very rough at the moment, I shorten that blue pivot steel by offering up the uh, gathering pallet. Remember, we want a tiny bit of arbor sticking out beyond the gathering pallet. Now the arbor is shortened, I reverse it in the lathe and start the uh, somewhat uh, time consuming process of um, turning down, filing and stoning the new bit of blue pivot steel. So we're basically going from 0.9mm 
down to about 0.83 millimeters, which doesn't seem much, but um, if you want to uh, the palette to be a really good fit, which obviously we do, then you've kind of got to take your time over it because it needs to be that kind of taper of a cutting brooch. That's a kind of useful rule of thumb. So we've basically got to try the gathering palette on the arbor many times until it slowly fits further and further on. So I'm using uh, the diamond file things again and an Arkansas stone to get a nice flat final finish. And there we are. The gathering palette is a good fit. It doesn't need driving on. It's just fitted by ringing it on, by twisting it onto the arbor. And that's the way that it's removed as well. If you get to the point where the gathering palette won't come off a clock like this, then the thing to do is to take all the other mobiles out and gently tap the arbor through the gathering palette against the plate or against a pair of brush tweezers. Please don't try and leave the palette off. You are likely to break the arbor. So there we are. Um, we got our clock repaired, or at least that part of it that I had anyway, and hopefully that is a useful technique for you out there. The uh, obvious kind of point there, and one encouragement I would give to people beginning in clock repair, is to really get on top of your hard soldering, that silver soldering or silver brazing, and your soft soldering, both, both those techniques are absolutely invaluable in horological manufacture and repair. If you just spend some time and practice and get them right, that will pay you back. Anyway, hope you liked the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below and we will see you again soon.